Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessy Champs, checking in with team number 3647, Millennium Falcons out of California. And I'm here with Victor, David, Edward, and Miles. We're going to be talking about this awesome robot they have here. They've been performing really well so far here at Chessy Champs, so can't wait to talk about, of course, that intake going into the uh, turret and hopper, their climber, all this and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. We'd also like to thank Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. So starting out on this robot, let's talk about the intake. I really want to hear about some of the design processes, the iterations you've gone through, and of course the mechanism itself. Uh, so basically the whole mechanism just functions like, can you open it up fully? So this way, uh, the robot's obviously not going to be levitating off the floor with the dolly here, but basically the ball will come here, and it'll kind of bump off the floor here, and it'll get sucked in like that, and then taken up there. So in the beginning of the match, is this dropping down, I'm assuming, that's kind of used to yes, help be yeah, a bumper bar, yeah. or what? It, yeah, basically it just helps get the ball up and not go under the, go under the robot and, you know. So fly all over the place. You guys have a pretty rigid intake, and when we look at yeah. uh, teams out there, some have gone much more of a looser intake. Mm -hmm. uh, Why did you pick more of a rigid one, and how's that been working out so far? Um, I think mainly just like the durability of it, really, and just like the really just like the structural integrity, really. And it's been working out great. Sure. Uh, we've had like a bit of bit of some issues here, and a bit of cracking here, but we fixed it up with a little piece of colored color here. And then we've had some like just a a bit of cracking, but other than that, it's. It's working out great. Sure. And it looks like you just have a couple of pneumatics that are deploying uh, for each yeah. one of the positions. Pneumatics there, pneumatics there. So what are each kind of, as we go into like this hopper here, what are kind of each of the positions that you have? So we have like the, the fully extended one, and then we have the like this one retracted in so that you can get feed. Yeah. And the strings here, the strings here, they, they stay not taut here so that you can actually like feed the balls through sure. like, in the feeding station. But when it's, but if it's, we, yeah, but whenever it's trying to pop out here, it's actually pretty hard for it to pop out once it's fully taut. So that, that's basically why I have the strings there. So you can feed it, but it can't really come out. Sure. Yeah. So David, run us through on this uh, next part here. I really want to hear about this uh, hopper. How'd you pick the uh, rollers that you're using? What kind of testing did you do? And any jamming issues you tried to mitigate as well? Yeah, so we actually had, uh, uh, we actually used hot dog rollers in our conveyor to get into our tower. And so pretty much these hot dog rollers roll the balls through here. And then they roll the balls into into the tower. And we actually did a method called indexing to prevent any sort of jamming. And that's where we run one side of the collector or the conveyor faster than the other side. Sure. And then when we do that, then um, the balls on this side will go faster than the balls on the right side. But they're both rotating inwards, right? But they're both rotating okay. inwards. So either way, we're still collecting. And then it pulls it into the tower either way. And then that, that reduces any jamming because the balls can be squished together. And yeah. And Are then, the uh, bottom rollers powered at all? Yeah, so they're actually powered oh, I see. at okay. the same time through all the, um, we belt, belted them all together, so then they're running at the same speed. And then when they go into the tower, then we have a, sorry, we have a conveyor that's, um, that's run by a belt that's um, pulling up together all the way to the top to hit the, if you see inside of our tower, we have uh, end stoppers to stop the balls from going into our shooter. Yeah, it's quite interesting. We can see that right in there. Uh, as it goes through. So I would think, uh, you know, this is kind of acting like a uh, uh, takeoff mechanism, right? It kind of starts to propel it through already for you exactly. on the shooter. Okay, that makes it, well, let's kind of a good segue then to talk about the uh, shooter and the turret. Uh, so let's uh, discuss it a little bit more. Uh, interested here, especially on this hood here, how that's operating, uh, your choice of the Fairline wheels uh, or whatever kinds those are there and just how the whole process works. Yeah, so, um, so as it goes up the tower, we have these kicker wheels uh, that like give it a little push and uh, before it actually gets accelerated. Here. Yeah. So that bridges the gap, and we have a ball stopper to prevent it from actually going to the kicker wheel before we want to. Um, 
And then up on the turret, we have a planetary gear in here, and then it controls the turret's position. But it's a little weak, so it doesn't actually keep position. So we usually um, just spam the set position button to keep it in position while we're in the field. Um, and then up here, we have linear actuators on each side with this 3D printed um, like a telescoping mechanism. To This holds the load, and this controls like how far we want to adjust the hood position. Um, and then this is all uh, controlled by the limelight up here. So once we're shooting, this limelight has a look cut table for the flywheel RPM and also the hood position, and also the turret position um, for left and right. Um, and then once that happens, we usually just uh, have co-controller or a co-driver aim the turret, um, sure. while main driver can control the timing of the shooting. Um, and then we have these two flywheels um, geared together, so it doesn't create like any weird sort of spin. Now, I noticed you got a special helper uh, to get uh, your shots up, but besides uh, him coming in, uh, I'm curious on this uh, this extending here because there's kind of these like bumps here a little bit. Um, so as the power cells going in, like that compression I think is changing just a little bit. Does that impact it or is once it hits kind of both these that negates everything anyways? Uh, no, we haven't had any issues with the difference in compression because it's getting smaller. Yeah. Um, usually the performance is really consistent and uh, the power cells go uh, directly like very fast. Um, but sometimes with older balls, it might get a different type of compression and it might like fly off a little bit. It's very rare. I also designed this turret with, uh, in like coordinates with uh, Team 4414. Sure. And they have a quite similar Small turret guy. to us. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Well, Edward, appreciate hearing uh, more about the uh, turret. Let's finish up. Uh, Miles talked to us a little bit about uh, the climber, what's going into that, and how it's uh, deploying as well. Yeah, uh, the climber's pretty simple. So basically, we have these shafts here that have the climber thing, and we have the um, uh, constant force springs that when this piston down here is released, uh, this will shoot up. And yeah, okay, yeah, demonstrate it. And the surgical tubing right here sure. flips this up because of the spring. And then this comes up, goes on the, on the hook, and we then shift our uh, drivetrain to then pull this string with this rod um, so it has enough force to lift the robot. And then we pull this down with the string and lift the robot up and then we're climbed. What is uh, this little polycarp piece on top? What is the function of this or how uh, do you use this that? This is just to keep it down with the um, piston. So sure. when, when so we're that just all the way down, it? then it, we can just release it with a button and it just flips out. So, if we, it would, we don't have the thing to... That's all right, we, can, yeah. we know what's going on for that anyway. So, yep, just that's a nice flip out. It just kind of oh, goes up for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, robot looking really good here. You guys are performing quite well here at Chessie Champs. So, really appreciate time once again. Uh, 3647 Millennium Falcons. Uh, good luck course here, and can't wait to see what robots you come up with in future years. Thanks a lot for taking yeah. the time. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month-on, three-month-off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12th, 2021. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.